So let's start with the the ceiling here. So this ceiling is a series of counter battens set underneath the existing rafters, which would have looked straight up onto a sheet of plywood where you could see evidence of interstitial condensation from the past and a felt roof above that. So what we're exploring here is how we delay the uh, work needed <coughs> to renew the roof above, insulate it in such a manner that that moisture through interstitial concentration doesn't build up in that void over time. How do we control that? So basically we've put that waterborne PU polyurethane foam in and cut it back flush and you can see that this intelligent membrane, this vapour variable membrane here, has been put in place over the walls and then will be folded up and sealed to the main bit of membrane which will cover this zone. The membrane will come down the walls and be taped to the plasterwork, repaired where necessary. So all the way along here the intelligent membrane will be folded down and glued in effect to the wall lapping with those pre-placed pieces there. <coughs> same in here. And same in here. Reasonably tight to the pipe, reducing in thickness, which may be no bad thing. Well, hmm. We'll see. This is just how it is. It's the reality of the reality of it, what you can expect, I think. I would say this is a good job. <clears throat> so here we are in an upstairs bedroom. That's the separate freestanding internal stud frame built away from the brickwork. This is where we built the sensors in earlier this week. Moisture sensors to see what's going on inside over the next couple of years. And again, the pre-placed intello membrane is here, <coughs> which wraps around the, the, the joist, which is in there somewhere. You can see that, probably not. And again, <coughs> an intello membrane will cover all of this and be sealed back to be sealed back to this primed brickwork here to make it vapor tight. So this is airtight, but not vapor tight, and the intello membrane will make it airtight. Now, if any moisture is driven back from the from the wall into the building, which can happen, of course, then it will hit the back of this intello, come through the foam. This is water vapor. Hit the back surface of this, which will open up in the way that it does, <coughs> and allow the water vapor to escape back into the room here through the the plasterboard. Let's check it's not foil backed by any accident. No, that's not foil backed, good. And again there you can see careful pre-placement of the Intello around obstacles. And they've done that very well. Plastic sheets cover the windows during the foam work. And that foam has been sawn back. So it's been overblown and sawn back. So quite what you see the off-cut of that foam <clears throat> offers. I'm sure we could find a way in the long run to reuse that somehow. So I'm interested in the bond between the timber and the foam. Now, if I saw that everywhere, I think that's very convincing. Let's give it a little tug. Yeah, I mean this foam feels quite flexible, quite resilient, so movement in, in the timber over time I would have thought wouldn't open up a crack given what I can feel about the, the flexibility of this. If that shrinks a couple of mil or more, I could imagine that not opening up. However, it's not like that everywhere. As you can see here, there's some sort of, maybe that's curing, you know, some sort of curing process. I think it feels, it feels bonded further back, further back, like the front face has curled up. Now remember that the foam is behind this, uninterrupted by stud work. So we're hoping that the, the combination effect of that lump of foam means that the, that wall is airtight, basically. 
even though you see little things like this that goes back to solid foam and then finally meets the wall. We shall see. And again, here's that, that slight curling. But it does appear, when I look in, that it seals to the back of the wood. <coughs> and elsewhere it's tight to the wood. Not too loose. Always not grip on it. floor has been renewed, has insulation underneath it and a new concrete slab. Okay, and there we have the ground floor wall. This west wall is the only wall that's been internally insulated. The gable wall and then the rear of this house has been externally insulated and then the 1970s extension has had its cavity injected with an airtight High performance PU foam, which is a different different specification to this foam. This has got a global warming potential of one apparently, whereas the other one is much higher, so we use it sparingly. Now this generally looks like an extremely extremely good job to me. And again you get a general idea of what you might expect. The odd bubble. The odd depression after sawing back the corners where there's a bit of a concavity. And very similar here. Always tends to be the top of the panels. As an example. So a little bit of air movement there behind the antenna when that's on. Lose sleep over that, I don't think. To understand what happens behind that wall, you have to look at the uh, construction details. But basically, the base course of that brickwork from inside has been injected with um, a product called Dry Zone to reduce salt movement and water movement up through the brickwork. And then this whole experiment is having one half of the house with the brickwork externally coated with a microporous brick treatment and the other half of the house not treated and the moisture sensors will pick up whether that makes any significant difference to the uh, moisture activity within the wall, within that timber framework you can see that and also within the inner face of the, uh, the brickwork. So we hope to be able to learn some interesting things from this. Doesn't smell too bad, this particular stuff. I wasn't here when it was sprayed, mind you. But as I said, it's sprayed with a water mist, which then reacts out with the foam, with the PU foam, and dries out very quickly. It certainly feels completely dry. I understand it's about an hour that the water's reacted out. Hmm, we shall see.